So hello and welcome to my talk in this workshop on topology and magnetism and ferroelectrics. My name is Birger Goebel and first of all I would really like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk. And since it's the first talk in this workshop, I want to start out very general. I want to discuss skirmions and their emergent electrodynamics. And afterwards, as the title of my talk suggests, I will go beyond skirmions and I will discuss several alternative magnetic quasi-particles and I want to explain to you why these may solve one or another problem of skirmions. So first of all, you all know that one of the main reasons why we do skirmion-related research is that we are in search for new carriers of information. So instead of having a hard disk drive with these individual domains which are rather large, the idea arose to use these skirmions instead. And the advantage is that they are topologically protected. So this term stems from mathematics and it basically means that this topological charge that you can see here is an integer number different from zero. And in mathematics it means that the skirmion is extremely stable. It's actually so stable that you can never destroy it. And this is similar to this geometric example of these links that you see here. So once these two rings are linked, it's impossible to disentangle them without destroying them. And in a continuous mathematic model, this is exactly true also for skirmions. However, in reality, it's a bit different because we have these magnetic moments on a lattice. So it means they can be destroyed, but there is a large energy barrier protecting them. And I will actually come back later to this very important point at the end of my talk, because it turns out that maybe topology is not as important as we thought, and it's really just this energy landscape that we have to analyze very, very carefully. So still these objects are extremely stable, and the idea is to use them as carriers of information, for example, in such a racetrack storage device. So you apply a writing signal electrically, you write them, you delete the skirmions, you move them and you read them. And so you have a nice sequence of information of the bits. So ones here and then zero would be a missing skirmion. And so you can store and even process your information. Furthermore, um, the topological properties of skirmions um, also give rise to some emergent electrodynamics. So these are on the one side the topological Hall effect and also the skirmion Hall effect. So the topological Hall effect describes the phenomenon that when you apply an electrical current of electrons, these electrons become spin polarized because they move in a ferromagnet. And then they reorient their spin when they travel through the texture of the skirmion. At least partially they will adapt the skirmion texture. And if you do the math, you will find that the electrons will accumulate a so-called very phase. And if you do a bit of more math, you find that uh, you can express this whole phenomenon in terms of an effective magnetic field. So this field is not really there, you cannot measure it, but it's an effective field that you can use alternatively to describe this transverse deflection of the current here. And in an experiment, this is what you would typically observe. Instead of just measuring a uh, conventional Hall effect proportional to the magnetic field and the anomalous Hall effect proportional to the net magnetization, you see an additional signal here that is attributed purely to the presence of the skirmions. And it is labeled the topological Hall effect and it's proportional to the skirmion density. So there has of, been, has of course been a lot of research in this direction or the very early and we have also contributed but in the following, I will focus more on the other effect, which is the skirmion Hall effect. And the thing is, we have angular momentum conservation. So when the electron spin reorients, also the magnetic texture of the skirmion reorients. And if you look at this reorientation of the magnetic moments collectively, you will see that the skirmion moves. However, this motion is not parallel to the current, but at an angle. And this is something we can really predict by theory, and you can make the statement for such a spin transfer torque scenario, the topological charge leads to a transverse deflection of the skirmion. So this is here the trajectory which we expect the skirmion to move along. And indeed in the simulation on Landau-Lifschitz-Gilbert uh, equation has been propagated here, 
you can see that the skirmion first moves along this trajectory, then there is some interaction with the edge, and since the current is too large, eventually the skirmion annihilates. And this is of course something that is really bad for an application, because then our information is lost. So we need instead a suppressed skirmion hall effect, where the skirmion moves directly in the middle of the racetrack and at very large velocities. This would be ideal. And this is also the main goal of my talk, to present to you several ways to achieve this. And for this we need, first of all, the equation of motion for such a spin-orbit torque scenario. Because it turns out you can not only drive the skirmions by a spin transfer torque, where you have a spin polarized current in a single magnetic layer, but it's much more efficient to consider such a bilayer setup. So you have a ferromagnetic sample on top of a heavy metal like platinum, and when you then apply the charge current, it will generate a spin hole effect in the platinum that will lead to the injection of a spin current from the perpendicular direction. And since now the misalignment of the injected spins and the texture is much larger, this torque is also much larger and the motion is much more efficient. And also, this type of propagation gives you much more freedom to control it. So here you see the so-called Thiele equation, which is the effective equation of motion of the skirmion, with the velocity v. And there are several terms, and due to the lack of time, I will only discuss here the two most important ones. So the first one is characterizes, characterized by the gyroscopic vector, which is proportional to the topological charge Nsk. So it means it's only there if you have a texture with a non-trivial topology. And, since you have this cross product here, it's always perpendicular to the velocity, as you can see here in this sketch. So the gyroscopic force is perpendicular to the velocity, no matter which orientation this velocity vector has. And this means the only possibility that we have here is to use an object with a topological charge of zero. However, there's also this other very important force that is related to the spin-orbit torque and the injected spins S. And the force is not just parallel to S, because it's also uh, modulated or modified by this tensor I, which basically covers all the information about the in-plane profile of the skirmion. So here it's really important whether or not the skirmion or the object is rotational symmetric, because then the shape of the tensor will drastically change and it will reorient the yeah, orientation of this force. So you see for nail skirmions, the force points along the current direction, but this is not always the case, especially not for alternative magnetic quasi-particles. So that's the main motivation to consider them. And I would say, especially over the last five years, there has been so much research in this direction from many, many groups, and also we have contributed to this field. And so we decided last year to write a review paper on this. So if you want to uh, get an overview about the different objects, uh, please feel free to have a look at this paper. So there we discuss objects that are very closely related to skirmions, then other objects which are the combination of two and more skirmions, and the three-dimensional generalization. So here I will focus mainly on four objects, and I want to start out with the more uh, intuitive ones, I would say. These are the skirmionium and the antiferromagnetic skirmion. And the reason why I would say they are rather intuitive and quite easy to understand is because they have a compensated topological charge. And this is because you take two skirmions with opposite magnetization and therefore opposite topological charges and you put them together and form a new object. So here for the skirmionium, the inner skirmion has an opposite topological charge than the outer skirmion, giving in total Nsk equal to zero. And here you have two layers, or also you could say two sublattices of two skirmions with opposite topological charges, so the antiferromagnetic skirmion also has a compensated topological charge. And so this means, at least if they are of nail type, then this force here will be zero and the motion will just be along the current direction. And for example, in this paper we have simulated this explicitly for the skirmionium, and you see, um, yeah, it moves perfectly in the middle of the track, and you can even tune nicely the velocity. 
However, there is really one big problem here because you still see signatures of the two subsystems. The inner part, the skirmion here, will be pushed upwards, while the outer part will be pushed downwards. And so there is the problem if the current is too large, then these two subsystems may unzip, and so the skirmionium will be destroyed and the information is lost. So it turns out the idea is nice, but it's probably very difficult to really gain an advantage compared to skirmions here. I would say much better is, or much more promising, is the antiferromagnetic skirmion, because here you have these intertwined sublattices. So I would expect a much higher stability of these objects, which means you can move them also much faster. And our contribution to this field was the prediction of such a periodic lattice of these antiferromagnetic skirmions, and we also predicted a way to detect them eventually. Because you know, the problem about these objects is they are very hard to observe experimentally. This is because the net magnetization is compensated, there are no stray fields, there is not even a topological Hall effect because the topological charge is zero. But we figured out that there is a new effect here that is really a hallmark of this phase, and it's called the topological spin hall effect. And the logic behind this is you have the two sublattices with the opposite, also with the skirmions with the opposite topological charges, and therefore they will exhibit opposite emergent fields. So the electrons will move along the opposite transverse directions. And also the net magnetization on these sublattices is opposite, so the spin orientation will also be opposite. So you really have the typical scenario of your spin hall effects where spin up and spin down go into opposite directions. So you could, in experiment, detect these with a spin hall signature. So I would say, as I mentioned earlier, this is quite easy to understand because you have to compensate the topological charge. But what I find also very, very interesting is these two other objects here, which still have their topological charge and the force acting along the transverse direction. So here we have to use the other term in the Thiele equation to suppress this force. And this can be achieved for the anti-skirmion and the bimeron because they have rather low symmetry and this tensor will then have a new shape. So I told you earlier that for the nail skirmion it's uh, anti-symmetric uh, and off-diagonal and for different skirmion types it will be rotated. And so for anti-skirmion and for the bimeron, it will look even different and it will then reorient the force with respect to the injected spins. And our goal, and we can achieve this for anti-skirmions and bimerons, is that this force has a transverse component that compensates this gyroscopic force. And then the skirmion velocity, or rather the velocity of our new object, will be parallel to the applied current. So that's really what we want. And that's something that we can get for these two objects. And in reality, we have to choose the perfect helicity, or we could also say we have to rotate these objects. So we have to cut our racetrack along specific crystallographic directions. So now a bit more detail here on the bimeron. So we have um, a bimeron that can be considered also an in-plane skirmion. Even though I don't really like the name, it makes sense because you can just start from a skirmion, which um, looks like this, and then you rotate every magnetic moment around an in-plane axis. So as an example, you take this moment here, rotate it by 90 degrees around this axis, so now it will point in the plane. And if you repeat this process for every magnetic moment, you end up with this bimeron. And if you look at it here, you see there's a blue dot and a red dot, characterized by the out-of-plane magnetization, and so you see it consists out of two subparticles, a maron and an antimaron, which have opposite magnetizations, the out-of-plane magnetizations, so both of them have the topological charge of minus one half in this case, so the bimeron has the same topological charge as the skirmion of minus one. And after we have predicted this, it has really been observed experimentally in such a setup with a cobalt disk, and you see here there's a black dot, a vortex, and a white dot, an anti-vortex. And this is just a different name for maron and anti-maron. So I've discussed already that we have this compensation of the transverse forces, so we expect the bimeron 
to move along the current direction, at least for one particular helicity. And what's also nice about this bimeron is that many results from the skirmion can be carried over for the bimeron. So we have, for example, the typical phase diagram, spiral phase, crystal phase, individual bimerons, ferromagnet. And we also have a topological hole effect. And this is because it still has the topological charge, so it still has the emergent field uh, perpendicular to this texture of the bimeron. However, what's really nice here is that we have the magnetic field and the magnetization pointing in the plane. So it means the conventional Hall effect and the anomalous Hall effect enter different tensor elements, at least from the typical phenomenological uh, explanation of these effects. So it would be really interesting to figure out experimentally if it's really true that the topological Hall effect can be measured here in a pure manner. And for the antiskermions, in terms of their current driven motion, it's the same as for the bimeron, because you see it's anisotropic. We have here uh, nail parts, we have block parts, so the skermion hall effect is anisotropic. And so our goal was to cut or prepare racetracks along different crystallographic directions. And this has been achieved by Jagannath Jena from Stuart Parkins group at the MPI in Halle. And you see here that um, you can really see how the anti-skirmion rotates and orients along different uh, directions because it always orients along the same crystallographic direction. So these two racetracks here are cut along different crystallographic directions and you see how they rotate. However, so far, unfortunately, in the experiment, they are still pinned, they don't move. But from theory, it would be predicted that in the right scenario, it would move without a skirmion hall effect. So we've achieved now the suppressed skirmion hall effect for all of these four objects, which is really, really nice. And in the last few minutes of my talk, I want to discuss actually a second problem. Because it's not only the skirmion hall effect, but also the problem of long-term stability of our sequence of information. Because when you look at such a sequence here of zeros and ones, over a long time scale, these skirmions will interact and diffuse, repel, attract each other, so they may form such an equidistant sequence here, and then our information is lost. And I think it's impossible to suppress this on the very long time scale. The only solution is that we encode our zero bits by a different non-collinear object. So we need the coexistence of multiple objects. And so I will go back now to the anti-skirmion system, which is a Häusler material, because it's a very unique, because it allows for the coexistence. So here are my simulations. I have considered the anisotropic DMI that is unique, unique for this Häusler material and favors strictly antiskermions. And also, as in every magnetic material, you have the dipole-dipole interaction favoring block skirmions of both helicities. And if I stabilize this texture, so simulate it for a few nanoseconds, for example, you find that all three objects remain stable. They deform a bit because, for example, the dipole-dipole interaction favors here the block parts, and here the anisotropic DMI makes the texture anisotropic, but the important thing is they remain stable. And also in the experiment, Jagannath Jena has observed them with Lorentz TEM microscopy, and at low temperatures you see the skirmions, and at higher temperatures you see the antiskermions. So the idea arose to construct such a racetrack based on the coexistence of these two objects. Zero would be antiskermion, one would be skirmion. And we expected this to happen at a critical temperature for a given thickness of the sample. And indeed, on the right here, you can see skirmions and antiskermions coexist at 268 Kelvin. And for example, here, there is even a topologically trivial bubble. So you have the coexistence of several objects, which is really nice and promising. And I will come back to the bubbles in a second. But first, let me tell you that we have also confirmed this coexistence by electrical measurements, by the topological Hall effect, because we do not see a single peak here as for a typical skirmion material and manganese silicide, but instead we see two peaks per hysteresis branch. And this corresponds to the skirmions and the anti-skirmions and to their coexistence. And now back to the bubbles. Um, so I found it really fascinating that also bubbles are stable here, even though they have a trivial topology. And so from the typical 
mathematical topology argument, you would argue they are not stable. However, we have seen them. And in another paper by the Riken group, they've even uh, yeah, observed four different types of them. And so I took the time and uh, simulated a bit more detail here, and I found that these bubbles are equally as stable as the antiskermians and the skirmions. And so they may be really, really promising because they have no skirmion hall effect due to the lack of topological charge, and they have these distinct in-plane magnetizations, so the net magnetization, which means you can easily distinguish them. And so you can construct, in principle, such a racetrack based on multiple carriers of information. So I think it's really, really interesting and uh, very promising that these objects are stable. And as I said, for me, at first, it was a bit unexpected because from the topology argument, they would not be stable. And even more unexpected was the result that I want to show you now at the very end. These are fractional spin textures. So we observed, or Jagannath observed, that at the edge of the sample, half antiskermians can exist. And this had already been simulated by um, Daniel Loss's group and Sebastian Diaz and uh, Tomoki Hiyosawa. And then we have done micromagnetic simulations for the Häusler material. And indeed, these fractional textures, they are stable. And they have a topological charge quite close to 0.5, which is because they are cut in half. But you see there is a bit of an edge twisting going on here, which modifies the topological charge. But the main message, the take home message from this slide is, you would never expect these objects to be stable from the mathematical argument, but they are stable. So maybe we must rethink a bit um, if the topology is really that important in terms of the stability, because topology only strictly works in a continuous mathematical model. And in reality, we are always on a lattice. So maybe it's more important to really in detail analyze the energy landscape. All right, and so with this, I'm at the end of my talk. I have explained and presented to you five different objects and discussed even a bit more background about skirmions and the emergent electrodynamics. And I have discussed that all of these objects have a compensated skirmion hall effect. They show unusual topological hall signatures, for example, the bimeron. And we observed the coexistence of several nano objects which may allow it to con construct advanced versions of this racetrack device. And with this, I'm at the very end of my talk, and I want to thank all of the collaborators that, of course, helped enormously in this research. And I want to thank you kindly for your attention, and now I'm open for the questions.